The special in-person and virtual meeting of the Upper Darby School District Board of School Directors will please come to order. Roll call board secretary, Mr. Rogers, please. Dr. Haig. Present. Mr. Desnoyers. Mr. Neal. Mr. War Savage. Ms. Lamar Murphy. Present. Ms. Williams. Present. Ms. Mitchell. Present. Mr. Fields. Present. Mr. Brown. Present. We're expecting a few others. They're running late. They will, we'll let you know when they're here, Mr. Rogers. The district posted this evening's agenda to board docs at least 24 hours prior to the commencement of this meeting. Is there a motion to approve that previously posted agenda? So moved. Second. Thank you. Are there any amendments to offer? There are no amendments. The agenda has been moved and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please signify by saying I oppose and state your name for the record. Those abstaining, please signify by saying I abstain and state your name for the record. The motion carried. The use of facilities report, uh, Ms. Uh, Director Lamar Murphy. I don't, do we have a quorum? I'm just concerned, did we, we didn't take comments before we voted. We're gonna do that after we discuss the report. Okay. That was just on the agenda. So. Oh, on the agenda, sorry. The use of facilities report, Director Lamar Murphy. The use of facilities report is in the hands of each board member and has been made available to the public. I move for its adoption. Second. Thank you. Are there any comments from the board? I intend on voting a particular way um, when the moment comes, but for the use of facilities, uh, the first item on that docket, I hope we take this as an opportunity to perhaps look at our policies again for use of facilities at a future point in time where we can make it more expressly clear that while yes, schools are responsible for access to information and yes, uh, the spaces in which we can access that information are vastly limited just based on how everything is configured around here. Um, but a lot of people were under the interpretation that events like that just don't have the opportunity to happen here. And so if that's actually not the case and Upper Darby can set the standard and set an example for how that proper political discourse can happen in a way that shares information and doesn't punch people down and instead lifts other people up, people who are interested in hearing those messages, then that would be what I would be most interested in, most interested in just my two cents. Thank you very much. Thank you for those comments. Any other comments on the board? I, I just wanted to clarify that we do have discretion on this. I, I had sort of asked about that and I think my, the answer was yes, as opposed to, so I know that there are cases where we're really bound by our policy and, and we sort of, the policy says what it says and we can't do otherwise um, because we're bound by the policy. And I just wanna clarify that this is a case where we have, we, that, that in general we have the discretion to deny the use of facilities requests, is that correct? Yes, uh, Dr. McGarry, you can expand on it if you want, but I, that, that is within our purview. Yeah, there are specific reasons. You're, tonight you're gonna to be in another meeting discussing revises and changes to policy 707, use of your facilities, trying to make them more user friendly, especially for youth groups getting access to the facilities. This particular uh, aspect that you're approving tonight um, is a little bit more complicated given, given the um, circumstances. Your typical use of facilities are for youth groups and organizations to get access to your facilities with having more than 50% of those asking to use your facilities being members of the community. And that's why this one is a little bit more unique. So you do have the discretion to say yes or no. Are there any other comments on the board? Tonight we're having a special voting meeting on the use of facilities. Absolutely, there can be public comment and you can come to the microphone, say your name, address, and make a general comment. It's a comment only so there wouldn't be a back and forth, but if you need to speak to an administrator after this particular legislative conversation, we certainly can. Following this, there are committee meetings we only take questions on agendas that are on that specific, those specific reports. Um, to participate virtually tonight in this particular aspect, you could have sent in a comment to board meeting comments at upperdarbysd.org. You need to provide your name, 
address and the specific agenda item or report that you'd like to comment on in this particular situation, it would be for use of facilities. If anybody in the audience would like to comment, comment now under public comment on the use of facilities, you can certainly come to the microphone, say your name, address, and make your comments, and the board will take that into consideration. Yeah, general comments will come up later. I do see some folks signed in. I don't know if that was to speak at the other committee meeting or general comments, so we'll get to that later. Cynthia Isle, 7611 Parkview Road, Upper Darby, Pennsylvania. Regarding the facilities being home and school for two schools, um, this year was the first year we had to use Facilitron, and having to use Facilitron now, we have to pay a fee to reserve the spaces on certain evenings, and I understand that it is a cost. However, we really were not educated on how this would play out for home and school. And the cost, in some instances, is prohibitive, and the more that we try to do at the school, the purpose of home and school, of course, you know, we do fundraising, but we really are focused on uplifting the spirit of the school. So I would like for us to consider, as we go forward with the facilities, that home and school be exempt from these fees. Um, in addition to that, um, to board, uh, <laughs> our board member, uh, Damian Warsavage, hearing you say it's the discretion of a school who can and cannot host events sounds a little concerning to me in that I don't know the full language of it, but I want to make sure that every group is protected and that if it's someone's discretion, if it's religious based or um, LGBTQ or any of those things that we make certain that no one can be discriminated against based on someone's discretion. Hi, Thank good you. evening. My name is Tracy Ann Sparrow. Um, my address is 536 Alexander Avenue in Drexel Hill. Um, I represent Drexel Hill um, Little League Association. Um, we sent a request to um, I'm sorry, Raiders, Raiders organization. Um, we sent a request to use the facilities for um, our cheer competition here at Upper Darby High School, which we've done in previous years before. Um, this year we were kind of denied it. Um, and we feel that it affects the kids that belong to this community go to the school in this community that we weren't allowed to um, have an event that shows support from the school district. Um, and we would like for the, the board to reconsider um, allowing youth groups within the community to use the facilities that is doing something positive in the community. We would like you guys to take that into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. All right, now I think we're ready to vote. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, please signify by saying I oppose and state your name for the record. I oppose, David Neal. I oppose, Damian Warsavage. Uh, I oppose, Don Fields. <laughs> I oppose, Meredith Hegg. Okay. Um, that's four motion, motion carried. We are now at the time for the public hearing. We will call on Upper Darby School District residents who signed in to address the board in the order in which they signed in, followed by emailed and phone comments. We would ask that you come forward, give your name and address, and present your comments in the three-minute time limit. In accordance with policy 903, the time allotted for general comments, both in-person and submitted comments, will not exceed one hour. Um, so it looks like we've done the, oh, no, we haven't, sorry. Uh, Cynthia Isles, you know, you're certainly welcome to come back up and speak at this time. Good evening, Cynthia Isles, 7611 Parkview Road. Um, my comments tonight are about the weapons detection system um, that the district is planning to implement. Um, I have several questions, and I know that it'll be discussed this evening, but I want to have the opportunity to both speak and ask questions. So first and foremost, I want to say that I oppose, as a parent in this district, the use of weapon detection systems for usage in our schools. Um, in all of the meetings I've attended with many, um, listening to disciplinary issues, 
It has never really been brought to our attention. The numbers, the data regarding weapons um, being confiscated in our schools, the incidents with the number of weapons happening within our school, and I want to know the justification for the district using um, a weapons detection system at this time. In addition to that, <coughs> how will we know that the system is effective? And so Dr. McGarry and I spar a lot about this in our meetings about the issue of data and how we know something is actually working. And then we bring in a weapons detection system, then what? How do we know that it's working? When does it improve test scores? Does it improve the school climate? What are the markers and the numbers that we will use to say, this has improved our school? In addition to that, what data will we be using to say, that it has an improvement and, and in fact has impacted student performance, has impacted student mental health. How do, how do students perceive it? Um, I am just really deeply concerned that our district, being a primarily black and brown district, will now have weapons detection as a form of hurting our students into school through a weapons detection system, and now add more disciplinary actions to our students when they're not cooperative during that hurting system, if they're too rowdy during a hurting system, if they're rushing, if they're late. What about the time that going through a weapons detection system adds to our day? Now our students, they already, whatever, for whatever cause, however much time that adds to the day and how disruptive that is to the educational program, um, I just think that we have a lot of questions that are not necessarily answered before we move into using a weapons detection system. And I just want to state unequivocally that as a parent of two children in a district and a child that graduated from this district and went to this high school and did exceptionally well with no weapons, with no pat downs, with no <sighs> being monitored in that fashion, I am against our district using weapons detection systems for our schools. Edward Ganges, 1905 Green Hill Road, Thank you. Uh, Lansdowne, PA, um, Upper Darby. So later we'll have the discussion during the other committee meeting on the weapons systems and then we can have a thorough back and forth. Well, it'll be, that, yes, yes, that'll be later on during that committee yes, meeting. Yes, there's an yes. agenda item on this this evening. Okay, so then I'll hold my questions for then. Thanks. Sounds good, thank you, sir. Uh, and um, Tracy Ann Sparrow, I don't know if you've already spoke. You could? Okay, thank you. A motion is in order for the adjournment of the meeting. So moved. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned.